factors specifically designed to erode the confidence and self-esteem. Female covert narcissists will gradually erode your self-esteem, even without directly devaluing you. <clears throat> it's through negation, systematically tuning out the validity of anything that you have to contribute intellectually. You know, at the beginning of any of the relationships I've had with covert female narcissists is they find me at a high point. Like an example would be taking this person to a literal commercial shoot where I just killed it, you know, and it was like she was so proud. And she believes in all these great things that are coming my way and so talented. And she got to watch from the set, you know, and then <clears throat> at the end of the relationship, about two weeks before it ended, I was doing an Instagram video where I had this moment of inspiration and it's the first time I ever recorded one in front of her pertaining to anything car related. And I did this funny video talking about my soccer mom SUV and, and sort of a character, like a pseudo alpha, you know, bragging and being braggadocious about this funny car, right? Well, right when I was done and I uploaded it, I was feeling happy, like, because this is something that sort of brought me back into being present, right? And she looked at me and she was like, did you upload that? And I was like, oh yeah. She's like, maybe you should delete it. You know, there was just something about your voice. It was just kind of, I don't know, high pitched and weird. You know, I, I would just do it over. And I felt this sinking collapse. And it was the first time I really associated her with this state of ruminating and, and uh, just invisibility. And I saw that this is what happened with my cooking for her, that systematically she started working on me, reducing what I was going to do in the kitchen from barbecuing and using the stove all the way down to just using the instant pot and her persistent anxieties and nagging about me making a mess, she would call it, got to the point where she didn't want me to cook anymore. And I lost that part of myself in that relationship. Just sort of something that inspired me and I wanted to provide turned into something very negative. Another girlfriend was actually working as an actor. And something that was super exciting at the beginning became the basis of being triangulated with her dad, talking about my career and how that had implications in terms of, you know, what was important to them and the family. And it had me under so much pressure trying to just nail each audition and then going to the Groundlings Theater for training in comedy improv. It was like there I was getting triggered to all hell by the instructor. And I was like, I just remember the anxiety that I would have sitting in my car, having arrived early to go to the school that I'm training at. And I would just be trying to figure out what was going on in my mind. You know, the other ways in which they would devalue would be constantly bringing up other people and bragging about them or talking about how fun so-and-so was or, you know, I had literally been encased in a boundary where my girlfriend's ex-business partner was this effusively grandiose persona that everybody loved and it made her feel like a special princess and they traveled and they did so much stuff and she missed it so much and she would talk about I don't really look forward to anything anymore and I would be impacted by that to the point where I would say things like I hope one day I can be somebody like that I know I could never replace that person but in my own way I can try and so literally I had inserted a glass ceiling based on this person's self-expression in public spaces that made him so charismatic and energized and literally commanding the attention of a room or he could just change it by walking in. If <clears throat> the levels of self-expression and fun that I've had, it was so well beyond anything she could even comprehend that I was a free and self-expressed person, but living in this relationship for five years and doing my business and being surrounded by people like that had eroded me to the point of just being nearly 
surviving by analyzing life in a complete state of numbness. I was numb, numb, right? And in all pervasive anxiety. And I realized that it was her, you know, her cheating, you know, forcing me to analyze and, you know, make sense of her behaviors and, and things that really didn't make any sense at all. And the extent to which she was lying right in, my, in front of my face and getting away with it, she was being turned on and excited by having me hang out with her after being with someone else because she enjoyed getting off on how close she was to getting caught, even to the point where she got so lazy with her lying, that was how it woke me up. Literally, she woke me up from a nightmare that I didn't know I was in because she, she told two lies about where she was doing on one afternoon that were irreconcilable. They could not be connected and they were so different that she was so careless that she enjoyed that. And so, you know, it's negation. It's asserting independence. It's negating your intelligence. It's comparing you to other people. It's talking about other people, not even in a comparison, but when you're kind of down and you have people talking about other people's energy, other people's enthusiasm, other people's success. She liked to brag about everything she was doing for the boss that she was cheating with to make his business work. And she was supposed to be doing that for mine. And she not only wasn't, but she would gaslight me about why she wasn't. It was always like, you know, it was the craziest experience. And it really just speaks on the insidiousness of being a people pleaser with all these triggers and even being around very unsophisticated, unintelligent people and how they can still undermine you to the point of near total destruction. That this woman was literally destroying my life and I didn't know it. Didn't know it until the very end. Literally just little clues the week leading up you know, you know, an example would be when I wanted to do a surprise party for her to cheer her up, where I got my nieces to go and purchase gifts for her from the Dollar Tree. And then I brought ribs and cookies to make and Krispy Kreme donuts to have a surprise party for her. And I knew this would work. And this was the last thing, really the straw that broke the camel's back was when I was there, and the doorbell rang and she answered it, she started to cry. And I was like, oh, it was like, I, almost like it could be touching, right? To see the little children that had gifts for her, my nieces and my mom. And when she embraced my mom, my mom's like, what's wrong, honey? This is what Nathan always does to me. He sets me up for failure just so he can guilt trip me. She said that to my mother right in front of me, right in front of my nieces. And literally all I was always doing was trying to make her happy. And when I couldn't make her happy, I was going to have the nieces. I thought, you know, these children she loves so much, they love her. I'd see her so happy around them. I, I was sure that if they brought her gifts that they picked out for her, that that would be something that would cheer her up. And to hear her call me an abuser, that I was guilt tripping her. I've never once done that. Not a single time. But that's how they experience you. I set her up to talk with the owners of a major restaurant business. To literally set her up with a turnkey catering opportunity after her business partner passed away. Literally giving her a restaurant, the keys to the kingdom. She had all the customers, everything she needed. And it was so shocking to see her not even speak at the meeting after convincing me of her prowess as a business owner. And I didn't really, I should have really recognized that it was all a lie. That she was just a parasite. She wasn't a businesswoman. She was a user, attaching herself to successful men to just take from them, just like she did with this married one. And so, like, looking at that, and that, you know, for me, I, I was just a battery for her just using me to torture me for her own ego. Sick. These people are sick. <laughs>